if if circle is one of the operations either addition subtraction or multiplication we want to know if the equation k circle quantity l plus m equals k circle l plus k circle m for all values of k l and m so let's experiment here suppose circle is addition well, then this equation would say k plus l plus m, which would just be k plus l plus m, would be k plus l plus k plus m. Well, that doesn't seem to work because we wind up with 1k on one side of the equation and 2k's on the other side of the equation. So this statement does not work if circle is addition. Let's say circle is subtraction. Well, then k minus l minus l plus m, so we'd have to distribute that negative sign, equals k minus l plus k minus m. And again, we kind of have this problem that we'd wind up with on one side k minus l minus m, on the other side 2k minus l minus m. And again, the problem of k on one side, 2k on the other side. So that's not equal. That doesn't always work. So if circle is subtraction, this equation does not always work. If circle is multiplication, well then, k times l plus m. On the other side, we have k times l and plus k times m. Well, this, in fact, is the distributive law. And this does work for all values of k, l, and m. So, in other words, this equation does work if circle is multiplication. So, if we can determine which operation it is, then we'd be able to answer the question. Well, statement number one tells us that k circle one is not equal to one circle k for some numbers. Well, that's interesting because we know that k plus 1 equals 1 plus k for all real numbers. We know that k times 1 equals 1 times k for all real numbers. So for those two, this statement is not true. And in fact, this law incidentally is known as the commutative law. But we do know that 1 minus k does not always equal k minus 1. Those two are not always equal. So statement number 1 essentially tells us, since it's not obeying this law, it has to be subtraction. And if we know that it's subtraction, then we know the answer to the question is no. So that then we have sufficient information to give a definitive answer to the question, which means this statement is sufficient. Statement number two just tells us outright that circle is subtraction. Well, if we know circle is subtraction, then we know the answer to our question. We know that the equation is not always true. So again, because we can give a definitive answer to the question, we have no doubt about the answer to the question, that means we have sufficient information. Now, if all this talk about the properties of real numbers, distributive law, commutative law, if this is all something unfamiliar to you, I'd suggest checking out magoosh.com where we have a number of math videos that will help you clear up your understanding of the math properties and what you need to know for the GMAT. Statement number one is sufficient. Statement number two is sufficient. Answer choice D.